uh, usually on the show, you hear Steve and Aaron and myself just ranting on about what we think are the best games. But <laughs> sometimes we have our friends like Paul here to tell us what they thought of the year and the best games of the year. So, Paul, take it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I guess I read this article online a few days ago of like um, things, gaming things to be thankful for in 2020. And they talked about like, oh, it's kind of cool how we can play like games on pretty much every device now, right? If you want to play Fortnite, you can play on your phone, your computer. Like this is right. unheard of five years ago, right? And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like it's only fitting to talk about like this since it's like December or getting, we're getting to December now. So I I, I remember I was like, oh, what, what am I, like what, what was pretty cool this year? I think for me personally, and I want to hear your guys' uh, uh, 2020 like gaming moments for you. But I think for me, if I had to dial it down in three games that I spent most of my year, I think number one, uh, I talked a lot about Runeterra on the website and on Squadcast before. Super mm -hmm. happy about Legends of Runeterra. Uh, super sick game, uh, card game uh, released by Riot Games that just set a new precedent for all card games out there. They made a way for card games to be accessible and like the truest free to play you can get or the closest you can get. Number two, I think for me, Valorant was pretty cool. It was a really good mm -hmm. release. The way they launched it, the way they hyped it up. And although the game's going through a lot of dips and changes and there's a lot of nuances in the game itself, I think overall being able to have that play experience was pretty sick. And then finally, um, for me, Fall Guys and Among Us. Super yeah. sick games that I got to play with my girlfriend, got to play with my game, like my, my friends, and just games that you can kind of get that social interaction, especially during times like this. I think those two games were a big uh, highlight for me. So, uh, yeah, I want to kind of use that conversation, kind of get your guys' thoughts on uh, gaming things that you were really hyped about 2020 and really made your year. So. Um, sure. I guess for me, the, the thing that I was thankful for is that given the circumstances going on around the world that people were still able to throw on or put on events like, like DC fandom or, uh, or, or mm. even, um, you know, what IGN was doing with their summer of gaming or like summer game fest, which I didn't really like summer game fest. I thought it was a bit all over the place, but even still to like, to have events, essentially things to still look forward to, to tune into, you know, we got the game awards coming up in a, like just yeah. about like 10 days. Um, and this is all stuff that's still being done online. And it's like people are trying to make it happen for game yeah. events for us mm -hmm. to still have something to look forward to, to enjoy, to experience together. PlayStation put on a bunch of crazy event events this year. Xbox did a bunch of showcases this year. Um, I think that that's the thing I'm most thankful for is that in this roller coaster ride of a year um, that has been all over the place, <laughs> it's been. It's stressful for a lot of people. It's been anxiety fueled. It's been uh, tough for a lot of people. It's been a tough year to still have something to look forward to, to be excited for, to to watch these events and get hyped together. Uh, I think that's the thing I am most thankful for. If we were to yeah. point out one specific thing, I, I'm gonna yeah. add on to that. I, I do think you know, with the time of you know what. 2020 has been in like the thunderstorm of like just crap being laid on down on us over and over again. It was yeah. great to see gaming as this like light in the tunnel that has brought mm. together not only the gaming community, but people outside of it. You saw politicians jump in yeah. um, mm -hmm. and it, yeah. it just made noise like gaming in general made noise in, you know, traditional news. And to me, that's outstanding because then it just shows that gaming is not all about like violence. We're not like the common misconception gamers will be violent because they play violent games. Mm -hmm. I think this year shut that down because yep. everybody mm -hmm. was playing games with everyone else, um, whether they're a gamer or not. And everyone was talking about it. Uh, so I love the fact that we were able to be the light of this, like, you know, uh, dark, dark year. Mm. I think that's yeah. the best way to put it. Yeah, jumping off what you guys said, I, I also want am really thankful for all the developers that were able to uh, you know, make games this year, given that a lot of studios were just shut down, so people were working remotely. 
Mm-hmm. At the start of the year, I I actually said that I thought that Final Fantasy VII Remake would probably be one of the last AAA games we saw this year because I, I thought that there was no way in hell studios could keep developing these high-class uh, AAA games in a space, like a remote space. They would all, mm-hmm. like, that's just bizarre to me that that could even happen um, and that they could sync up and, and finalize games. It was It was remarkable. So, yeah, so... To see games like The Last of Us come out, Ghost of Tsushima, Miles Morales, man, like the list goes on and on and on. But just to see these developers like strive through and just de- develop and deliver these games is unfathomable to me. So shout out to all of them. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like though that list you just mentioned, like those are quality, like really yeah. great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Best of the generation for Caboose goes to Tsushima, right? Yep. Uh, in there, right? So they were able to do this at at such um, a hard time where I feel like a lot of studios didn't know how they were going to do it. So they were yeah. creating a plan behind the scenes and trying to make it happen. Um, I'm also just very thankful for like just all the studios really standing up and forward for like women in the space and um, speaking out in terms of like black lives matter, like the social political aspects in gaming. Um, I know a lot of people say, yeah, like leave. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, um, a lot of people are for the argument, leave politics out of gaming, but we've talked about it before where we kind of feel like it's already ingrained based on the stories and like what's happening all these different gaming worlds so it, yeah. it's great that like we're seeing now that blending of gaming coming into what's actually happening in the world and um really providing that stage for people's voices to be heard mm-hmm. yeah what about it's you, paul? been a crazy year yeah paul i think i think the biggest thing that i resonated with was when camille talked about like i think the notion of gaming that like the 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 idea before was that like it was like an addiction right it was unhealthy like to to a lot Mm -hmm. of people right and um i think the fact that a lot of these public figures are really like normalizing it and really showing that during times like this it's how we kind of keep our heads high i guess and kind of can still find the enjoyment in like some things and i think like games have created this space where uh, it's not just a place where you're playing your favorite game, but it's a place where you can kind of like relax or like mindfulness almost, you know what I mean? Like a place to kind right. of take away from like these like stressful times and kind of like enjoy life again. So I think that was the biggest takeaway mm-hmm. for me. And connect like, people. Like right? for yeah. me, yeah. Yeah. like everyone oh, had their sure. meetings, but I had gaming. Like for me, my Monday night, exactly. God, we used to do weekly, but we actually created a whole WhatsApp group because with the pandemic and having to stay inside, we were like dedicated to a specific day and just kept the yeah. going. Mm-hmm. Um, so in order of that, like helping your mental health, um, yes, a- anything that is overused can be bad for you. But at a time like this where you are trying to reach out with your friends or your family and you don't necessarily have the means to do that, um, if you game or have a console or even just your phone, being able to do that, like just 2020 made that um, known to everybody that you still have those resources to have fun um, with all your friends and it's through gaming. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even you you pointed out like the whole – uh, stigma that anybody who plays games is all violent video games, and that's like the way that we've been painted, right? I threw a Mortal Kombat tournament uh, online that I that started like back in September, and it ended up being like this huge, positive, really fun thing. And like, yeah, Mortal Kombat's a really violent game, but here we are, like, all celebrating, having a good time, having a good laugh. It was something that I was looking forward to every single week. That I know a lot of people out there were looking forward to every single week, and now like. It was it was so much fun and such a positive experience that I'm doing a second part. Like we're doing part two and that's happening really <laughs> soon. And like, you know, for a game like Mortal Kombat where everyone looks at it like, oh God, it's Mortal Kombat, it's super violent. Um, it's still like you can find such a positive experience out of it because it's bringing people together. And that's that's what this year has been all about, you know, with, uh, with us still having to socially distance, with everyone not necessarily being able to gather uh, physically like in an actual area. Um, to have video games, to have something where we can all connect and have a good time online uh, is a really good thing. It's a, it's a positive light at the end of the tunnel. And so, 
yeah, I mean, I'm I'm glad. I'm glad that we got to get something like that out of this crazy year, and hopefully, soon enough, um, this disaster <laughs> can go away, <laughs> and we can meet up at the next event and all hang out again. You know, no yeah. doubt. And, and I mean, last week, uh, Camille Kloos, you guys laughed at me about like my unabashed love for Animal Crossing: New Horizons, but I, I said <laughs> last week, like. Like that game came out at right the right time this year. Like as the right. world shut down, uh, like I opened up my island and friends I could otherwise not see came over. We all hung out. We just started, you know, messing with the the raccoon twins and everything. And like that was just a game that brought the community together in a really positive way. And I, I'm thankful that I'm not even speaking just to Animal Crossing, but there were so many examples of those games out there this year that came out uh, that really just unified the gaming community and people uh, getting people into playing games in general. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious to know what our chat thinks and what they're thankful for um, in terms of 2020 and gaming. So please hit us up on our socials at Squad State. I'm also thankful that, Paul, you got to join us today. Uh, so yeah. thanks for coming back. Yeah. It's always nice to see you. Thanks for having me. I was always but, glad. Now, I know you're working on articles for the website. So what do you have coming up? Uh, just more... Uh... Uh, Magic the Gathering stuff. So, uh, what do you nice. call it? I'm, I'm back in the Magic Gathering. They have this big set, always new sets coming out. So, I'm always writing about that. So, in case you guys are interested in reading up on Magic's newest cards and want to kind of get my take on them, be sure to check it out on Squad State. Nice. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to just, before I get to Steve and Aaron, uh, the rods and chats, just like, thanks. Thankful for Squad State. That is so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, love Rodney. <laughs> um, all right, Aaron, what do you have coming up uh, this week? Uh, yeah, just uh, still streaming, doing the YouTube things as well, playing Mortal Kombat, uh, playing Spider Man as well. Um, and then December 9th, I got my Mortal Kombat 11 tournament coming up, Champions of the Realms 2, with uh, my buddy Destroyer. That's going to be really exciting. Every Wednesday and Friday, we have the pool play. And the top eight, it's eight weeks of action that lead up to a finale. Uh, the thousand, there's a thousand dollars contributed from Console Gaming League that starts out the prize pool, but a bunch of people could still donate to it through Match Arena. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be really exciting. And then you can also check me out Twitter and Instagram at Caboose EK. All right, sweet. Now, Steve, you're also on our website, uh, squadstate.com. Yep. So if I'm browsing, what can I expect from you? I know you last week you teased that like something big was coming. Any word? Uh, still no. I uh, that's uh, all being kept se secret. I I'm really sorry. Uh, but right now I'm kind of just uh, prepping myself for two big things. Obviously, Cyberpunk's coming out, and then um, mm -hmm. um, the Black Ops Cold War integration into Warzone. That's going to be massive as well. So nice. I'm looking forward to those, and then getting some content out for those two things. Uh, kind of to wrap mm -hmm. up the year. Those are my two big uh, focal points now. Mm. Yeah, uh, mm. that that Cold War into Warzone is getting me nervous, but also excited. So we'll have to know. talk about it on the show. For myself, I'm going to be talking, actually, I'm going to be talking about uh, Black Ops Cold War on the TV show, which you could catch on Jinx Esports TV Canada, which airs on Thursdays at 7 p.m., as well as on Amazon Prime. So you could expect some content coming from there, and we'll play the game, obviously, on the show. You'll see my skills in zombies. Um, so I'm excited for that. But for all things outside of just us four, we have more squad members. Uh, so check them out on the website, squadstate.com, where we have really cool articles that they write, as well as I mentioned, the TV show, which you could catch on our socials, um, information about it, at Squad State. So uh, let your voice be heard. Let us know what you like from us. Let us know what you will want to see maybe in the next episode. And for now, we're going to hit the road, and we'll see you next week.